Welcome to Worship from Christ Church Quarry Bank, marking Advent Sunday. A time when we both begin to look forward to the celebration of the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day itself. But also recognise that we look for the day to come when Jesus as Lord of all will return and make all things new. Saint Paul writes in the letter to the Romans, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts this Christmas tide, be king of our lives today.
But in those days, after that distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, and the stars will come falling from the sky. The celestial powers will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and he will send out the angels and gather his chosen from the four winds, from the furthest bounds of the earth to the furthest bounds of heaven. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its tender shoots appear and are breaking into leaf, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all this happening, you may know that the end is near at the very door. Truly, I tell you, the present generation will live to see it all. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Yet about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor even the Son, no one but the Father. Be on your guard, keep watch. You do not know when that moment is coming. It is like a man away from his home. He has left the house and put his servants in charge, each with his own work to do, and he has ordered the doorkeeper to stay awake. Keep awake then, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, evening or midnight, cock crow or early dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to everyone, keep awake. I could start this recording by saying Happy New Year. But some of you might think that I'd lost a month somewhere along the way. But today is Advent Sunday. And Advent is the start of the church's year. And a time when we look forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus. But also looking for Jesus coming again. Such is our history and the cycle of our church year that is a rhythm of readings and teaching that encourages reflection on the past while looking forward also. I wonder what memories Advent brings for you. As a child, I would be entranced by the good old Blue Peter wreath constructed from wire coat hangers, tinsel and some candles. As I prepared for this reflection, I searched for a pair of wire coat hangers I was surprised to find I didn't have any. I'm not sure that that Advent decoration would have as much meaning today as it did then, when there weren't any chocolate versions of calendars. We didn't mark every day by the opening of a door, but we did have the candles on the Blue Peter wreath or the one at church to help us look forward to excitedly. But what were we looking forward to and who were we waiting for? The season of Advent is a time of waiting when Christians everywhere may spend more time than usual on spiritual practices. For example, following a Bible study or reading a specific book. There are many books written to encourage Advent reflection. For some, however, the time up to Christmas is a time of stress and anxiety, worrying about celebrating Christmas. How we wait and anticipate tells the world what our priorities are. Do we know who we're waiting for? Who is coming? If we know who we are expecting, then we will know how to wait. As the children wait for Father Christmas, they're excited, but they're often told that they have to be good or he won't come. Talking to children, they know how to prepare for him coming and apparently he sends an elf to keep an eye on them whilst they're waiting. And then there's the chocolate calendars. But reflecting on the church's year and the season of Advent as it is a new year, we get the opportunity to look forward, but in a new way. There's an opportunity to press the restart button and make some decisions about how we will do things differently as we wait in hope. Our long-term plan is to wait expectantly, but not in an idle way, in a way that prepares for Jesus coming again. Are we preparing ourselves for an event that will see the end of this world and the arrival of our Saviour? This year, more than any, it feels as if the world is waiting for good news. I wonder how many of you felt sad at the announcement of Tier 3 restrictions for most of us, and further delay until we can meet with families and friends. The lack of the Christmas services that we look forward to and derive so much comfort from is hard. 
and this year the Church of England is focusing on the theme of comfort and joy and has many resources available on its website to support this, including an Advent prayer diary we can download and follow each day. Comfort and joy holds together the hope of Christians everywhere, that Christmas will be a time of joy and celebration during this difficult time that we're living in, whilst acknowledging that for those who have lost loved ones or livelihoods, or are not able to be with loved ones, it may be a time when we, the church, can bring consolation. It's a year when the church will need to be prepared to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep, as St Paul said in his letter to the Romans. There will be a presence of the church online and on social media that people can access. In our locality, Practically, we can offer comfort and joy by being aware of the people who need the extra help or contact by phone or other means. We can choose to give practical support in areas where we may not have given help before. For example, giving extra support to the food bank, the Salvation Army, the work with the homeless. The good news we can share is that Jesus has told us he will come again and we can hold on to that hope. But how do we live as people hoping for the coming again of Jesus? The Bible tells us that we will not know when that is and tells us to stay alert. Each of us can reflect on whether we feel ready to meet up with Jesus and what our response would be if instead of worshipping and celebrating the birth of Jesus, he was here among us. Is there a place for Jesus in our homes and our hearts? Or are we worrying and wondering how we do things this year? What we have in these restricted times is a gift, even if it's hard to receive. Inside this gift is an opportunity to organise ourselves differently and to gaze in awe and wonder at this wonderful scene which we have of our Lord born as a child in a manger but also to look forward to when for each of us times will be different and we have the opportunity to meet with the risen Lord Jesus. What would our response be then? Would he be impressed with my attempts to make everyone happy by providing the right gifts and the best food? Or would I be thinking of the other opportunities I had and missed along the way to bring comfort and joy to others? I get excited when Advent comes for many reasons and it's not just the prospect of Christmas coming and the gifts and celebrations. It's also about the prompting to pause and reflect, to prepare my heart with prayer and reflection for meeting with Jesus and being grateful for the gift that God gave to us when he gave his son for each one of us that we might have life in all its fullness and look forward expectantly with faith, hope and joy.
everlasting God, as we come before you at the start of the season of Advent, we ask you to prepare us for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to hear us when we pray in faith for the needs of the Church and the world, and to thank you for your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for your worldwide Church today in many cases having to remain in individual homes to praise you and to hear your holy word through online services, rather than being able to gather together in places of worship as congregations would wish to. Give us a sense of expectation as Advent begins and inspiration as we move through this season towards Christmas. Bless all those who lead, preach and teach during these unusual circumstances, especially our own leadership team here at Christchurch. David, Carol and Val, as they seek to do your will and guide us all through our spiritual and worldly Advent journey until the time when we celebrate the birth of your Son on Christmas Day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, drive away despair from our politics, revive our dreams of justice and truth and restore our passion for what is good and right. Establish your just and gentle rule throughout the world, especially where conflict exists, peace seems far away, and many have lost everything, including the hope of a peaceful future. Govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority at this difficult time of the global pandemic, so that they may act justly, honestly, and according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those who will only see Advent as a hectic and worrying run-up to the excesses of a secular Christmas. Help us as we try to set an example of a true spirit of preparation for the incredibly precious gift of the Christ child. May they see in our services, our carols, Christingles, crib surfaces and communions, whether in church or online, the true meaning of Christmas and experience your love for them through the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those for whom this day will be long, difficult and lonely, for those who are struggling with any kind of illness at this time, physical or mental, and for all those who care for them, whether in hospital or at home. Comfort and heal all those who are suffering, especially during the continuing COVID-19 pandemic. Give them courage and hope. We pray also for those who are working so hard on the development and testing of suitable vaccines so that these can soon be administered to the population and it will be possible for life to return to something closer to the normality that is being missed by so many of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have recently died and for those for whom these next few days will be their last. Be near to them, their families and friends at this difficult time, and comfort them with the knowledge that in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, the gates of heaven will be opened wide for all who accept him as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Advent Lord, as we move into this new church year and a season of hope and promise, be with us throughout this special time and draw us ever closer as we journey together towards the stable and the birth of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and each other and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation so that your Son may find our hearts ready to welcome him. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Now let us bring all our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we prepare to move out of national lockdown this week, then Sunday worship is able to resume in the church building from the 6th of December. Please do book for that service as the same regulations in terms of social distancing applied as applied previously continue to apply and that limits capacity in the building. 
For this reason, the carol service and the crib service will be produced for Facebook and YouTube. The carol service will be replayed in church on the big screen on Tuesday the 22nd of December at 11 o'clock. Please do book a place for that. This is designed really for those unable to catch the service on, on the internet. There will be a Christmas Day service at 9.30 a.m. Please do book for that service too. Bookings are being taken now for that. A final prayer of blessing as we begin this Advent season. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.